Good day students. This is teacher Shilpa Adkar. I hope you and your families are fine. Stay home, eat healthy and stay safe. You have learnt about western and Indian tradition of historiography. Today let us learn about applied history. Applied history is the effort to apply insights grounded in the study of the past to the challenges of the present, particularly in the area of policy making. It is a study to determine how useful the knowledge and application of history is for the benefit of the people in the present and future times. Applied history is also known as public history. Public history is an action or approach that allows historical knowledge to reach the public. It also relates history and its knowledge to social planning. It provides guidance in finding solutions to social issues. Let us see the relation between applied history and research in various fields. Our present is dependent on the events of the past. Historical events relate to various fields like politics, philosophy, technology, science, etc. Future development of all these fields depend on the past knowledge we have about these fields. The first one, philosophy. The history of philosophy helps in understanding the origin of various ideologies. The traditions giving rise to these, those ideologies and their historical development. Ancient people tried to speculate the relationship between the universe and humans. This speculation gave rise to many myths about the about origin of the world and human life. Deities, rituals and philosophical explanation of rituals also gained importance. The knowledge of history of no language in which it is expressed helps us understand these philosophical expressions. Next one is science. Knowledge of history of science helps us in understanding the factors that facilitated scientific inventions and discoveries. Their chronology, that is, the period when they were invented and the cause-effect chain that led to those inventions and discoveries. The cause-effect chain reinforces the idea that each cause brings about a related effect and that in turn each effect becomes a cause for the next effect. Technology The history of technology helps us learn about our journey from making stone tools to the mechanization of production. Scientific discoveries and inventions and technological advancement are mutually dependent on each other. The more the scientific discoveries and inventions, the more is the advancement in technology. The history of technology helps us in understanding the changes and the cause of these changes in the various fields of production architecture, engineering, etc. The next one is industry and commerce. There was rapid growth in industry and trade which led to an expansion of mutual social transactions. Social transaction is an integral part of industrial and commercial management. As the nature of industry and commerce changed, there was a change in human relationships 
and social organization. To understand all this development, it is necessary to study the history of culture, social organization and economic institutions. Therefore, it is important to know the history of industry and commerce. Fifth one is management studies. All factors such as means of production, process of production, process of distribution, involvement of human resources, marketing and sales etc. are all interrelated and require management. It is important to understand the psychological character of the people involved at the various levels in this chain. It is essential to have knowledge of similar functional systems of the past and bring about changes, improvements and make the management smooth and efficient. In order to achieve all this, it is important to understand the social and economic institutions that support the industrial and commercial processes. The next one is arts. The various art forms have their own style of expression in the form of intellectual, emotional and cultural traditions. Art as a form of expression helps historians by providing them with a graphic source of knowledge, a representation of the events in history from the people who were living it. Art shows the attitudes of the era and what inspired them. When we look at an artist's work, we see not just their vision, but their work speaks, moves, emotes and captures the ideas and beliefs of that time. To understand the development of these art forms and the prevalent art style in the given period, we have to study the history of the specific art form, the key to the expression of any art form, the emotional temperament of the artist involved, and the developing history of the specific art form can be understood with the help of cultural history. The next one is humanities. Humanities are studies about human culture such as literature, philosophy, history, etc. It provides general knowledge about the past accomplishments of human beings throughout history. Humanities include disciplines like history, archaeology, sociology, anthropology, political science, economics, etc. Anthropology is the study of various elements of humans including biology and culture in order to understand human origin and the evolution of various beliefs and social customs. People all over the world try to speculate the relationship between the universe and human existence which gave rise to various mythological stories, rituals and their philosophical explanation. Various disciplines under humanities have theoretical foundations based on philosophical theories. Historical knowledge of all the humanities can help us in understanding their development. Let us learn about Applied History and Art Present. Applied History is the attempt of using the insights of the past to resolve the issues of the present. The remains of the past, whether visible or invisible, exist in the present. We should know about the history of the remains because they tell us about the work and traditions of our ancestors. We have inherited this and it links us with our origin. We can correlate applied history with the present.
Though the times of the society in the past was different, the problems were more or less the same. We can learn from the mistakes of our ancestors and try not to repeat them. Preservation and conservation of the remains will benefit not only us but also our future generations. Heritage management creates opportunities of employment. Let us see management of cultural and natural heritage. The first one, cultural heritage. It is a form of human creation which is of two types, tangible and intangible. Tangible cultural heritage refers to physical artifacts produced, maintained and transmitted down the generations in our society. It includes ancient sites, buildings, monuments, artifacts, manuscripts, sculptures, paintings, etc. which can be seen and touched. Intangible cultural heritage refers to practices, representation, expressions, knowledge and skills etc. It includes oral traditions, social customs and rituals, performing arts, traditional skills etc. which cannot be seen or touched but it is abstract and can only be understood. The next comes Natural heritage. Natural heritage includes fauna, flora, ecology and geomorphic characteristics which is important for sustaining the fauna and flora of a region. Fauna refers to animal life and flora refers to plant life. Ecology is the study of the relationship between living things and their surroundings. Geomorphic means study related to the form of landscape and natural features of the earth's surface. It is very important for the benefit of the future generations to preserve our heritage. On the basis of the directives announced by the UNESCO, that is United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, which is a global organization, list of sites and traditions are declared as world heritage. UNESCO declared several Indian traditions, tangible and intangible, cultural and natural sites as world heritage. A list of this is given on page 18. Please read it carefully cultural and cultural and natural heritage management is one of the main aspects of applied history the organizations in charge of the conservation and preservation of the heritage are the archaeological survey of india india's state departments of archaeology and intact that is Indian National Trust for Art and Cultural Heritage. The experts in these fields need to be aware of the cultural, social and political histories of the heritage sites. Principles of applied history are useful in creating awareness among them. The first one the process of conservation, preservation and development of heritage sites can be done without causing any change in its original state. A detailed survey can be carried out regarding the social structure, psychology of the local people, problems faced by them and their expectations. The operations of conservation, preservation and development of a heritage can be possible without hurting the sentiments of the local people. 
Fourth one, participation of the local people can be encouraged. Fifth, systematic planning can encourage local skills and create better employment opportunities for the local people. Let us see to the affiliated professional fields. There are various professional fields affiliated to applied history. They are museums and archives. The archives preserve and store historical documents or records of places, institutions, people, official records, old films, etc. Second one, preservation and conservation of historical sites. The third, tourism and hospitality. And the fourth one, entertainment and mass media. All these fields require expert personnel with specialized skills. They are, first, experts like historians, archaeologists, sociologists, legal experts, etc. The second category, technicians like engineers, architects, skilled photographers, etc. And third, museum curators and archivement management professionals. These experts need to have adequate knowledge of the ancient sites, historical background of the structural remains and artifacts. Projects in the field of applied history can create various opportunities for these professionals. In this lesson, we have learnt about the role of applied history for creating social awareness regarding conservation and preservation of our cultural and natural heritage. This study is essential to avoid damage to historic places and to ensure that they are preserved for the benefit of the future generations. We have now come to the end of the lesson. Please write the answer to the given question. The question is, suggest at least 10 solutions for preservation of the sources of history.